Hey guys, David here and welcome to this video. Today I want to kind of explain to you the whole concept of CNC. Now I'm building a huge CNC mill right at the moment, but I've realized that many of you might not even know what a CNC mill is. So I'm going to start at the very, very basics in this video. So if you already have some experience and know what's up, then this is probably not the right video for you and you can feel free to skip it and uh, come back in my next video. But if you have no clue whatever a CNC is or like how it actually works, then this is the right place for you. Now before I start explaining what all these parts before me are, I want to quickly mention that there are many many different kinds of CNC. Uh, like the main kinds that you have in the hobby space are CNC routers, CNC mills and CNC laser or plasma cutters. But they all have a very basic function in common. They move some kind of tool around relative to some kind of workpiece. In case of mills and routers, this is a motor that which has some kind of cutting bit uh, that you can cut away from other materials like wood, plastics, metal or whatever else you might be trying to cut. The main difference between routers and mills is that mills are a lot stronger and heavier but they usually have a smaller work area. While routers are a little bit lighter and can cut bigger things but are not quite as strong, so not quite as suited for uh, tougher materials like metal. With CNC laser cutters and CNC plasma cutters, uh, what you're moving around is a laser head or a plasma cutting head that can cut out things out of usually metal or wood or whatever, uh, and you're just moving around that head as well relative to the workpiece to cut something out of it. What the CNC part of the name implies is that the whole thing is computer controlled. CNC stands for Computer Numeric Control, which is just a fancy way of saying that the computer sends the machine a whole bunch of values where it moves to. Now the big advantage of that is that it is very easy to do extremely complex shapes uh, that would be almost impossible to do accurately by hand. But since it's a computer that's doing it, it doesn't matter if there are three measurements that need to be hit or if there are 10,000 different measurements all over the place that need to be correct. Now when first getting into it, uh, it can be quite intimidating how these things work. But if you break it down a little bit, it is actually not all that difficult. So what I have here uh, is a simple kit from Banggood that they have sent over. It's a very, very cheap, around $150 uh, CNC engraver. It just has a, a simple motor for the tool head where you can put in a bit and engrave on stuff like uh, plastics and wood, and maybe even some metals. Now this is very, very entry level. Uh, it's perfect for beginners and it's perfect for trying to learn how CNC works. Since at $150 it's not expensive at all, but it still has basically all the same functions that even my big CNC has, where even the motors are almost as big as this entire machine. I took the liberty of already kind of pre-assembling uh, some parts of it. Uh, it comes all in single parts uh, that you have to assemble yourself, which is not that big of a deal. Uh, here we have kind of the frame, which is the base for everything, and here we have the table which is going to be moving back and forth on the base here. Then already pre-assembled uh, from the factory is the tool head here, which also has the functionality of moving the tool head up and down. This is later going to go here and move uh, back and forth here to cut on the X direction. In order to create that movement, we need some kind of motor that can be computer controlled. Here we have just some very simple stepper motors. Uh, these are rather small ones. Uh, you would also find them on a 3D printer or something like that. And they are gonna turn these threaded rods. Basically what these are is just a very long screw that if you turn it and you have a nut on it, then this rod moves back and forth on this screw. If we now control this screw with a motor, then we can control the, mo the nut here that is moving back and forth with a motor. And if we control this motor with a computer, then here we have our motion. There are also some other ways. You can also work with gears uh, or with a belt dri driven system, but this is one of the most common ways. With that, we have a precise way of telling the machine uh, how much to move. But we also need to have 
the head be able to slide smoothly back and forth and not have any play in it, otherwise our cuts will be imprecise. That's where you need some kind of uh, linear bearing system. This machine here uses uh, these 8mm ground steel rods that are very precise, very straight and very even. These are then inserted through uh, some bearings in here and this way it can slide back and forth very smoothly without a lot of friction but it also is very sturdy and it uh, like doesn't wobble around. This can also be achieved with uh, linear bearings which are very similar to this except that they are on a rectangular track that slide back and forth. Or you could even use some different rollers inside of a slot or something like that. But like, the main important thing is that you can very securely uh, have this mounted, the tool head or whatever you're trying to move and have it only be very easily movable in one direction. In order for me to be able to show you a bit more how this works in action, I'm gonna finish assembling this machine and then we're gonna reconvene and talk about how we actually control these different parts. So I've assembled the X and the Y axis now. I haven't yet mounted the motors so that I can still move them freely around. So here is what I was saying with the X axis. You can move around very freely on here, but it still is like really sturdily mounted and can't be moved very much in this way. This is very integral to have a very nice and smooth motion. You will maybe also able to see that I only tightened up the first rail here then inserted the second one with the bottom pieces loose to just make sure that the spacing is perfect and I moved it to one side and tightened this side and then moved it to the other side so that it doesn't have any extra friction. Same thing with the bottom part here which slides back and forth and I also made sure to have the spacing here and the spacing of the things correctly so that it is smooth, like rolls as smoothly as possible. With the mechanical part of the machine assembled, let's take a look at the electronics. This is the electronics board to control this specific router here and they all have kind of similar components but of course for bigger machines the electronics also are a lot larger with bigger drivers and everything. So here we have what is an Arduino basically. It's just the interface to the computer and it has a processor on there that can uh, do some uh, simple like step calculations and stuff like that. Then on here we have uh, three motor drivers. These drivers here take the signal that the microcontroller sends out and amplifies it so that the stepper motors can use it. The microcontroller here is not nearly strong enough to uh, turn the motors hit himself because it's just uh, way too weak. 
but thanks to these drivers the motors then can be used and turned. These are basically uh, the, the main things that are needed. We here have uh, three drivers for X, Y and Z axis but on some machines you also have a second Y axis or maybe you have additional axis and then you just need uh, more drivers to drive the stepper motors. You also have some additional components on here like this relay which you, you can use to either like turn on and off the spindle or you could use it to turn for example coolant off, on and off or you could turn on off lighting or whatever else you want to control. You can also uh, have connections for a laser on here uh, and then you can control the laser with this board as well. So it's very versatile. You have also some extra pins down here that can be used for example for end stops which is just a simple switch that is uh, placed so that when the machine comes to one end it bumps this switch and tells the controller that hey I'm at the end here don't go any further. That's a very handy feature and very necessary on bigger machines where you could damage a lot of stuff if you tried to move further than the axis actually can move. Then to control you simply connect this board here via USB to the computer and then you can load your controller program on there and control this board through the interface. So to finish off let's install this and fire up the little machine and actually see it in action a little bit. So I've now got everything set up and I have all the electronics hooked up, all the motors and everything is hooked up. I even inserted a bit in here and clamped a piece to the work table here. On this tablet here uh, I have Universal G-Code Sender running, which is just a very simple program to send some G-Code uh, to the machine. I set it up that I have the, the uh, controller here on the side where I can move the axis around here in the middle you can see a file that I have uh, already loaded in that is some G code that I created uh, in a different software and then export it so I can uh, use it here once I press play here the machine is gonna engrave this hello world into this wooden piece here but first we need to set the zero points uh, and since there are no homing switches or anything the machine just assumes that wherever you turn it on that's its zero point. But we want the zero point for the machine to be exactly in the middle here with the bit touching uh, the workpiece so that it knows where to start from. So I'm just gonna navigate the machine to this point and then uh, set it as zero. So I think this is good for the zero point, so I'm gonna hit here, x equals zero, y and z. And in here you can also see some macros that I created to, to turn on and off the spindle. So if I press here, the motor is gonna turn on. And turn on and off again here. I might have set the zero point a bit too low since it already started uh, engraving so I'm gonna just bump it up a little bit, just half a millimeter to make sure that I'm actually above the surface here. So there's nothing else to do but to, uh, to finish off engrave this here. So I'm just gonna press play and we can see if it actually works how it is supposed to.
So as you can see here, while uh, I might have been a bit optimistic with the speeds uh, on this little machine, it did engrave and you can with ease read that it says hello world here. Uh, so I hope this helped you a bit uh, to try and understand how CNC, this whole concept works and how, what the different uh, parts uh, are in the machine and how they play together. If you have any other questions, make sure to leave them down in the comments so I can get to you or even make an updated video with uh, your questions answered as well. If you want to play around with CNC yourself, I can highly recommend this little machine. It might not be the most powerful machine, but at $150 there isn't much better that you can get and it really is a great learning experience. Uh, and if you like it, you can always uh, build or buy a bigger machine uh, since it not, wasn't a really big investment, this one. So that's it for this video, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, check out all my affiliate links and other links down in the description. Once again, thanks for, to Banggood for sending me this machine. I'm gonna see you in the next one, bye!